Okay, I want to talk about monkeypox today. I want to talk about what is it? How is it transmitted? Who is at risk? What's the case fatality rate? What kind of virus is this? How is the government responding to this and why we should be very, very skeptical of this? Joe Biden answered a question from a reporter about this supposed monkey box outbreak that's taking over or that's spreading around the world. And um, his response is just the goal of these people, the absolute goal of Joe Biden. What have your health advisors told you your level of concern to be about monkeypox and the cases that are in the United States and around the world? Well, they haven't told me the level of exposure yet, but it is something that everybody should be concerned about. We're working on it hard to figure out what we do and what uh, vaccine, if any, may be available for it. But it is a concern in the sense that if it were to spread, it's consequential. That's all they've told me. Should everyone be concerned about it? Should we? Should we? Somehow, I just don't think that's true. The facts contradict this. This, like I said, the goal of these people to, the goal of these government officials, these politicians to think after what they put us through with COVID, the lockdowns, the masking, the vaccines, the fear, the usurpation and infringement, the outright violation of our rights, to think that we would fall for this again, my goodness, I can't imagine, I, I, I hope nobody was, does, but I can't imagine that anybody would fall for this. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, from what we know about monkeypox, it is not a new virus, and it's not something that everyone should be concerned about. This is what the Daily Mail reports. Quote, the community transmission of this virus is largely centered in urban areas, and we are predominantly seeing it in individuals who self-identify as gay or bisexual or other men who have sex with men. Oh, so it's not everybody who should be concerned about this. This this monkeypox virus is spreading in the gay community. And the leftist response to this fact, this reality, this is, this is just a thing that is happening in the gay community. It's not conservatives assigning it to gay people or stigmatizing the LGBT community, but liberals' response to the reality that this is right now essentially contained to the gay community is just it's extremely telling. So let's dig into this. I'm Liz Wheeler. Welcome to The Liz Wheeler Show. Now, I'm sure I'm not the only one who has noticed this, but everything is getting expensive. We are in the biggest economic crisis since 2008, with a government that's printing trillions and trillions of dollars. Consumer prices are the highest we have seen in 30 years. Inflation is certainly here to stay. And if the government continues its out-of-control printing and spending, the dollar could continue its freefall and lose its coveted role as the world reserve currency. So how do you protect your money, your retirement, your savings? Well, American Hartford Gold can show you how to hedge your hard-earned savings against inflation by helping you diversify a portion of your portfolio into physical gold and silver. They'll even help move your existing IRA or 401k out of the volatile stock market into a precious metals IRA and they make it easy. They are the highest rated firm in the country with an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau and thousands of satisfied clients. And if you call them right now, they will give you up to $1,500 of free silver on your first qualifying order. So don't wait. Call them now. Call 855-768-1883. The phone number is 855-768-1883 or text the word L-I-Z, Liz, my name obviously, to 65532. Again, if you want to make a phone call, the phone number is 855-768-1883. Or if you prefer text messages like I do, you can text the word Liz to 65532. That's Liz to 65532. It's the responsible thing to do. You will be glad you did it. Text Liz to 65532. Okay, by the way, so this narrative that we're seeing from the left about monkeypox already um, that we heard Biden say everybody should be concerned. That that's 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 an insinuation that every person, regardless of your demographic, regardless of your age, your health condition, or your behavioral choices, is at equal risk of the monkeypox virus. And it doesn't look like that's true from the data, from the research, from the scientific knowledge that we have about monkeypox. Again, decades of knowledge because this is not new. It doesn't look like that everybody is at equal risk. It looks like behavior is one of the key determining factors about whether you will contract this virus or not. In fact, it seems that uh, monkeypox is spread primarily 
through sexual activity because it requires close, very close contact with someone else in order to contract this virus. Someone who is symptomatic, who has this, you have to have very close contract contact. So sexual activity is one of the primary ways that this is being spread. And and one of the super spreader events was actually a gay and fetish festival in Belgium. Yes. So this is actually very reminiscent of what Fauci did in about the HIV AIDS crisis. He, again, because he's a dinosaur, he's been working in the U.S. government for decades. He was the one leading the charge in the government at the time that the government was addressing the HIV AIDS um, crisis. And Fauci did the exact same thing. His public narrative was a fear-mongering narrative where he was insinuating or allowing people to believe because he wasn't painting the full picture accurately and intentionally he was doing that. He was he was making it seem that every single person was at the same risk of contracting HIV and, and therefore getting AIDS. Now, we know that that's not true. We know that people are at high risk of getting HIV if if they engage in homosexual sex behavior, if they are intravenous drug users, if they share needles, if if they get somebody else's contaminated blood on an open wound of theirs. It's not just, oh, you know, a mom and her baby walking down the street and, and someone with AIDS coughs a mile away and, you know, she's at high risk of getting it. No, 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 not at all. And that's the same thing that's happening here. We already see it. So that's a red flag. That's red flag number one. When we hear Joe Biden say everyone should be concerned, well, that's already a false narrative because not everyone has an equal likelihood of contracting this. It's actually very, very tied to specific behaviors. But this is some of the response. These are some responses from the left, which is extremely telling about this, well, this this pandemic or <laughs> this, this, it's not quite a pandemic, right? But it's, 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 it's a pandemic in the making, at least. It has the building blocks of what, it, of what it looks like when the left builds a pandemic. So this is a tweet from, let me see what the guy's name is. He's a doctor. He is Jafardian MD. And this is what, this, this tweet went so viral. This is what he writes. He says, if monkeypox spreads, I think I'm leaving medicine. I'm not exposing myself to a disease with 10% mortality because this country of selfish, F's refuses to mask or get vaccines when they're available. Make whatever health choices you want. My choice will be to leave. And so I read this and I thought, wow, this does not give me a lot of confidence in the medical community, by the way, when you have doctors who are so gullible to non-scientific information about this. But it, it also shows you exactly where the left's mind is, right? It shows you that the left is that the left, when they when they see a virus, when they see a virus with the potential to spread, they immediately jump to pandemic. But when they get to pandemic, they don't just say, okay, how do we address this? How do we stop the transmission? How do we find treatments and therapeutics? They immediately try to control us, you know, going uh, right to refuses to mask or get vaccines. They want to force us to mask again. They want to force us to get vaccines again. And if they haven't said it, it's just because they haven't primed us or conditioned us properly. It's not because that's not in their mind. So that's the first tweet. Then we have another viral tweet about monkeypox. This one is from... Um, a woman named Audrey, her Twitter account is Audrey the Finest. She hosts a podcast. And this is what she tweeted. Again, it went viral. She said, if monkeypox becomes a pandemic, I'm never, ever leaving my house. And I read this and I thought, this is exactly what the government officials like Biden and the public health officials like Fauci. And this, this is what they want. They want people to be so fearful that they, they hear the word monkeypox. They don't look up anything about it. We have three cases of monkeypox here, and we'll get to exactly what that means in a minute. But they hear the word monkeypox, they hear the same sort of fear-mongering rhetoric as they heard with COVID, and they say, I'll never leave my house. If you never leave your house, then you are going to be reliant on something or someone aside from yourself and your family. And that something, of course, is the government. This is exactly how the left wants the American people to behave. They want them to be so crippled with fear that they will trade the idea of security or the idea, their liberty for the idea of security. So that's the second one. And then we have, this guy is a doctor. He's um, a, an epidemiologist. He's actually made, become quite famous through COVID. He, he's a COVID fear monger. Um, I always think of him whenever I see him, see one of his tweets on Twitter, I always think of him as Dr. Ding Dong um, because his name is Dr. Eric Feigolding. And it, and he's a ding dong. So there you go. This is what he says. He tweeted this. He goes, airborne precaution, all in caps, airborne precaution, new CDC update admits to quote, theoretical risk of airborne transmission of monkeypox virus and thus 
airborne precautions should be applied whenever possible. Don't take chances, Dr. Ding Dong says. Let's learn from recent mistakes. Take precaution. So first of all, what does he mean by precaution? He means masking. He means social distancing. He means locking down. He means all of the things that didn't work to stop the spread of COVID that the government imposed on us. But the other part of this is the CDC is so absurd. The CDC has absolutely zero credibility except to leftists who want to control us and use the CDC as justification. But imagine, imagine actually using this phrase, theoretical risk of airborne transmission. You're supposed to be a, CDC is supposed to be a scientific agency. They're supposed to base their recommendations on data and studies, on evidence-based medicine. The theoretical risk of airborne transmission, that's nothing. That's nothing. We have no evidence that this is that this is a respiratory virus, that this is spread through aerosols the way that COVID-19 is. We've known about monkeypox for decades, and it's never spread through airborne transmission that a mask would protect you, uh, protect you from. Even, even if you accepted the premise that masks work uh, against viruses like COVID, which you all know where I stand on, where I stand on that premise. Okay, so. Going back to this risk is, should everyone be concerned? Well, or should you be concerned if you are in a certain demographic or a certain age or engaging in certain types of behavior? So it's very obvious here that um, behavior is a huge indicator right now of whether you're going to come in contact into very close contact with this virus, meaning that you would, you would potentially be at risk of contracting it. And so the reaction from the left immediately is to tell us that it is bigoted of us to note that transmission of the monkeypox virus right now is more or less contained to gay men, meaning men having sex with other men because it's being sexually transmitted when the men have sex with other men. The United Nations um, UNAIDS, the AIDS agency, said that um, noting that is homophobic and perpetuates a racist stereotype, even though this is what actually, I actually laughed reading this because they're called, they're calling me homophobic, right? They're calling you racist and me homophobic for recognizing the reality of how this is being transmitted. And yet this is what they write. The, uh, this agency said that quote, a significant portion of cases reported quote, identified were identified among gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men with some cases identified through sexual health clinics. Okay. So <laughs> How is it homophobic and bigoted and racist of me to note that, but not homophobic, not racist, and not bigoted of the UN to note the exact same thing? The exact same thing. Because that's all we're doing. We're just saying, listen, monkeypox is spreading through sexual contact, and there's an outbreak of it in the gay community. You'd think, you'd think these leftists who claim to be champions of the LGBTQ community, if they actually cared about these people, then they, they would raise that warning. Because you don't want to get monkeypox. I mean, this doesn't look like a nice virus. It looks nasty. And you'd think, you'd think if you care about LGBTQ people and you know that this is being transmitted right now in gay communities, you'd think you'd say, well, maybe you take a step back on the sexual activity until this has died down so that you don't come in contact with it because we care about you and we don't want you to come in contact with it. But listen to this. Listen to this. This is, this is a leftist named. Greg Gonsalves, he he works, he's an epidemiologist. He works in epidemiology. This is what his Twitter bio says. I'll just read it for, word for word. He says, I work at Yale, focusing on operations research, epidemiologist, epidemiology for infectious disease. In the real world, been an AIDS activist for 30 years. Okay, an epidemiologist. This is what he writes. He writes a whole thread in which he says, so a thread on monkeypox. I am not an expert on the pathogen, but... Right now, many of the cases are in gay men, and I know something about infectious diseases among men who have sex with men. First, it is not a gay disease, as some people have said. If you, if you are say it is, typo, I think he's saying if you are saying it is, you are perpetuating stigma and ignorance, damaging the public health response to this, and endangering lives. He says the disease spreads by close physical contact, and this is the setting in which most cases have been found in this global set of outbreaks, most likely disseminated via large social events. He says the answer isn't shut down all these parties. Now, he's, when he says events, he's talking, by the way, about, um, he's talking about this, this fetish, this gay and fetish festival that happened in Belgium that seems like it was uh, patient zero of this monkeypox out, outbreak that has disseminated around the world, but it brought 
80,000 people from around the world to this event. And then obviously they, they took it home. But he said the answer isn't to shut down all these parties or tell gay men to stop having sex at them or dancing in close proximity to each other. It won't work. It hasn't worked for HIV or other kinds of infectious disease outbreaks among gay men. He goes, a friend has said, this is what we do. Don't panic. Don't stigmatize. Don't suddenly become sex negative. Educate men on what to watch out for and ask people to stay home if they're sick or have some unusual lesion pop up, even if they aren't planning to have sex. He says, if we jump to cancel events and stop having sex, we lose any hope of an effective response later if this doesn't burn itself out. So... This guy is, uh, this guy is, Greg Gonsalves is a leftist. And I just cannot get over the fact, the answer, he says, isn't to shut down these parties or tell gay, tell gay men to stop having sex at them or dancing in close proximity to each other. So you are telling me that for the past two years, more than two years, the past two years and two months, people all around the world, but specifically in the United States, have been locked down. We've been forbidden to go to church. Our businesses were closed down. We've had restrictions placed on public assembly. We've been masked. There have been vaccine passports. Our entire lives at some point, I know that this isn't, this isn't the case in every city, in every state right now. Some places have, have opened back up. But at some point in this two years, we have been told by the government and by public health officials, by epidemiologists, just like Greg and Solvis, that we have to lock down. It's the only way. We have to stop living our lives. We can't go on dates. We can't go to school. We can't go to work. We can't go to church. We can't go ride a bike on a bike path. We can't go paddle boarding in the ocean by ourselves or go to the beach. We can't even take our kids to the park. We've been told to stop. <laughs> and yet when it's gay men, now, now, it's bigoted and it's homophobic and it's racist to tell gay men to stop having fetish festivals, and sex with other men until the monkeypox outbreak dies down. This is the radical left. This is, this, is, this is the woke left. These are the people who want, who try to tell you that they know best, that they know best. Absolutely unreal. But the answer isn't to stop, stop 80,000 people getting together for a fetish festival. The answer isn't to stop gay men from having sex with other gay men or even to recommend that they make that choice fully informed. No, no. The answer is you're not allowed to go to church and you have to wear a mask on an airplane and you might lose your job if you don't get the vaccine that Fauci wants you to get. Absolutely unreal. So this, this, this fetish festival in Belgium was attended by 80,000 people. 80,000. It's called the Grand Canaria Pride Festival. And it is a, it essentially served as a super spreader event because people from around the world came to this. I mean, 80,000 people is a lot of people, right? And specifically a festival that's dedicated to, um, to gay pride and fetishes. You can expect that there's a lot of sexual contact, a lot of sexual activity that's going on there. Um, perhaps even a lot of, of, of not safe sexual activity, not to, u- not to use a term that the left has co-opted here. This took place from uh, between the dates May 5th and May 15th. And these are extremely important dates, extremely important dates. um, Because last year, one year ago, it was actually predicted that there would be an outbreak of monkeypox around the world starting on May 5th, May 15th of 2022. A year ago, that was predicted. We're going to talk about that in just a second. I like Nutrafol because it's natural and it works. Now, we all know that half of the people who watch my show are balding men, and there's no shame in that. You know who you are. There is, however, a holistic solution for you that promotes both healthier hair and whole body wellness without drugs or prescriptions. Nutrafol is clinically shown to improve hair growth, thickness, and visible scalp coverage without compromise. It's made from 21 potent natural ingredients that support sex drive, better sleep, and less stress, too. In a clinical study, men showed progressive improvement in hair growth and thickness after three and six months. You too can grow thicker, healthier hair, and you can support our show win-win by going to Nutrafol.com and entering my promo code Liz to save $15 off your first month's subscription. This is their best offer anywhere. It's only available to U.S. customers for a very limited time. Plus, you'll get free shipping on every order. Get $15 off if you use my promo code, go to Nutrafol.com. It's spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L, Nutrafol.com, promo code Liz, and you will get $15 off 
your first order. Nutrafol.com promo code Liz. Okay, so rewind to March 2021. That's 12, 13, 14 months ago. March 2021, there is a group, it's a, it's a global security organization is what they call themselves. It's called the Nuclear Threat Initiative. Now this group, the Nuclear Threat Initiative, and we're gonna get, by the way, more into exactly who's behind this group, Nuclear Threat Initiative. We'll get to that in a minute. But first, in, in March of 2021, they published a document. And this document is essentially a pandemic war game document. It, it's a simulation. So a, as you recall, in the months leading up to the COVID outbreak, there were, there were pandemic simulations that played out um, that were actually very, very similar to what happened with COVID. It, we talked about it on the show a little bit. Bill Gates was highly involved in these. He, he brought people from all around the world together um, and he ran these simulations of what would happen if a coronavirus that was enhanced using gain-of-function research um, was released around the world. And um, this is very similar to that. So that, 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 that happened. These, these pandemic war games, if you will, or these simulations are fairly common. But what's odd about them is who runs them and how very, very similar this particular one is to what's happening right now. So March 2021, the Nuclear Threat Initiative published a document that read, and I quote, in March 2021, NTI partnered with the Munich Security Conference to conduct a tabletop exercise on reducing high-consequence biological threats. The exercise examined gaps in national and international biosecurity and pandemic preparedness architectures, exploring opportunities to improve prevention and response capabilities for high-consequence biological events. This report summarizes the exact scenario, key findings from the discussion, and actionable recommendations for the international community. Okay? So basically what that means is th this, this group of individuals, again, we'll get to who's behind the Nuclear Threat Initiative in a minute, but the, the people who are behind the Nuclear Threat Initiative ran this, this tabletop game, they say, the simulation, in order to pass recommendations. To whom? To pass recommendations to countries around the world, to organizations around the world who are key players when a public health emergency happens. So the UN, the World Health Organization, um, you get the point. This is what they write. Developed in consultation with technical and policy experts, the exercise scenario portrayed a deadly global pandemic involving an unusual strain of monkeypox virus that first emerges in the fictional country of Brinia and eventually spreads globally. This is what their document says, right? Later in the exercise, the scenario reveals that the initial outbreak was caused by a terrorist attack using a pathogen engineered in a laboratory with inadequate biosafety and biosecurity provisions and weak oversight. The exercise scenario concludes with more than 3 billion cases and 270 million fatalities globally. So think about this for a second. Think about this. Think about, this is, this is what the document, this is from March 2021, predicts that in this, well, they call it a hypothetical scenario. In this hypothetical scenario, this outbreak starts on May 15th of 2022 in what they dub as a fictional country of Brunia. So what actually happens is on the real May 15th of 2022, there is this gay pride and fetish festival happening in Belgium in which monkeypox uh, is introduced. It becomes a super spreader event for monkeypox. We, we, we don't know the details of the strain of monkeypox. We do know we do know that monkeypox has been, you can use the word studied if you're naive, you can use the word tampered with if you've read the history and know how the coronaviruses have been tampered with. Um, we do know that monkeypox has received similar attention and similar funding from uh, the same laboratories, the same players, and the same governmental organizations that that gave money and tampered with coronaviruses, right? You know, Fauci gave the money from uh, the NIH to subcontractors like EcoHealth Alliance, and they gave it to the Wuhan Institute of Virology, and they conducted gain-of-function research on coronaviruses. This the same, the same public health conglomerate. This, this taxpayer money controlled by Fauci, given to people that were conducting shady experiments under the guise of biodefense. But really, is it biodefense or is it bioweapons research? It's dangerous. I'll tell you that for sure. Um, the same sort of thing has been done to monkeypox as well, meaning monkeypox has been the subject of funding and the subject of researchers. Okay, so it, it, it's, 
it's a very odd coincidence. I'll tell you that. It's a very odd coincidence that 14 months ago, the Nuclear Threat Initiative published a tabletop pandemic game simulation for monkeypox that would start on May 15th, 2022. And then on the real May 15th, 2022, it actually happens. That's a pretty strange, that's a pretty strange coincidence. The Nuclear Threat Initiative, this is who was involved in this, this pandemic simulation. Um, Dr. George Gao, he is the director general of the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention. So the Chinese communists, just who you want involved in that. Dr. Chris Elias, president of the Global Development Division at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Oh, there you go. So all of a sudden we have the Chinese communist and Bill Gates, but wait, it gets better. Dr. Ruxandra Drahia Akli, global head at Johnson & Johnson Global Public Health R&D. Oh, so a doctor that works for a vaccine manufacturer in research and development, meaning perhaps in vaccine development. So we have the Chinese communists, we have Bill and Melinda Gates, and we have vaccine manufacturer R&D departments. Okay, let's keep going. Dr. Beth Cameron, Senior Director, Office of Global Health and Security and Biodefense, U.S. National Security Council. Oh, now we have the U.S. government. The U.S. government involved. Okay. Sir Jeremy Farrer, Director, Welcome Trust. The Welcome Trust, by the way, is like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation of Britain. It is the, it is the same sort of very radical left organization that operates uh, as a charity, but really is pushing radical leftist ideology in Britain. So who is that? The Chinese Communists, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Johnson & Johnson Research and Development, the US, the U.S. government through the National Security Council, the British Bill and Melinda Foundation, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Wellcome Trust. Then we have Dr. Izumi Nakamitsu, the Undersecretary General and High Representative for Disarmament Affairs at the United Nations. Oh, <laughs> the United Nations. Then we have an, uh, an ambassador from the Munich Security Conference and the CEO, Dr. Ernest Moni Moniz of the Nuclear Threat Initiative. This is, this is just the group of people that I like, that I would gather around me if I wanted to feel that, if I wanted to feel safety, if I wanted to feel secure, if I didn't want to feel like I was being manipulated for a greater ideological, ideological agenda. Not, th these are, these are some of the most compromised individuals. They've not only lost credibility throughout COVID in their, their public health, um, their public health maneuvering, but we, we've caught them. We've caught them almost all. I mean, the, these are the UN, the Chinese Communists, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Johnson & Johnson, the Wellcome Trust. Um, it's, it's just nutty. And the, this wargaming document planned on a monkeypox pandemic on May 15th of 2022. It's, it's, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. And go back for a second to the reaction of the left, right? This The reaction of this 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 nor this normal this average American girl who says you know I'm never leaving the house if this monkeypox pandemic is actually a pandemic never never leaving the house you have this doctor or somebody who claims that he's a doctor saying if people don't mask if they don't vaccine that I'm quitting medicine you have Doctor Ding Dong saying it's airborne it's airborne go back to the precautions the quote unquote precautions meaning forced masks you have this this anti-vax stigma. This, this social ostracization that the left tries to aim at those of us who don't want to wear a mask on an airplane and don't want to take Fauci's vaccine. I mean, this reaction of the left, it worked, right? It worked with COVID and we're seeing that it could just as easily work again. This is coming, by the way, at the exact same time that the World Health Organization is essentially trying to take, the, take our rights away from us. And when I say our rights, I'm talking not just about you and not just about me. I'm talking about the right of the United States to make decisions about how to handle future pandemics. It's, it's actually, it's, well, it's actually quite terrifying. But did you know that poor sleep can cause weight gain, mood issues, poor mental health, and lower productivity? And that sleeping less than six to seven hours per night is linked to reduced white blood cell count? This is why I like Beam Organics because it addresses a problem that a lot of us have. If you don't sleep enough, it impacts your white blood cell count. Not many people realize this, but having a consistent nighttime routine is so important to your body's health, your overall well-being. A better tomorrow starts tonight. Introducing Beam Dream. 
Beam is the world's most innovative functional wellness brand with unique products for everything from sleep to recovery. And today, you get a special discount available for Beam's sleep product. It's called Dream Powder, their best-selling healthy hot cocoa. It contains natural sleep-promoting premium ingredients. It's triple lab tested, no THC. 98% of people surveyed fall asleep faster when taking Beam Dream. And 99% of people experience better sleep quality. It's trusted by the world's top athletes like Danica Patrick and Baker Mayfield. And if you don't love it, get your money back, guaranteed. For a limited time, you can get $20 off when you go to beamorganics.com slash Liz. You have to use my URL, beamorganics.com slash Liz, and use my promo code at checkout. My promo code, of course, is Liz. That's B-E-A-M organics.com slash Liz. Promo code Liz for $20 off at checkout. Beamorganics.com slash Liz and promo code Liz for $20 off at checkout. Okay, so the World Health Organization is right now trying to create a pandemic treaty, except that they've degraded this from a treaty because they know that countries like the United States, a treaty would have to be ratified by our Congress. It's not something that the chief executive can do unilaterally or that the executive branch can do unilaterally. But the World Health Organization is is trying to centralize the world's response to pandemics. They're trying to be the ones that control what what policies the government implements in response to a pandemic. So, I mean, we're talking lockdowns, we're talking masks, we're talking vaccines, we're talking money, we're talking everything that happened to us or that was imposed on us by our, our government. And sometimes it was state governments here in the United States. If you're in a blue state, it was worse than if you were in a red state. Um, obviously, if you lived in California or New York, it was a lot different than if you lived in Florida or in Texas. Um, but the World Health Organization wants to have power over what countries do so that there can't be a situation where if you live in the United States and you live in Florida, then you don't have to wear masks. But if you live in New York, you're not even allowed to send your kindergartner to school without wearing a mask. The, the World Health Organization wants to be able to, to be the one that not only declares unilaterally when a pandemic is a pandemic. They don't want other, other governing bodies or other, other governments to be part of that. They want to be the ones that declare when a pandemic is a pandemic, and they want that declaration to give them emergency powers. They want to be able to say, okay, it's a pandemic, and when there's a pandemic, it's a global public health emergency, and therefore, every country is compelled by their participation in this pact, they're calling it a pact, not a treaty, um, to enact certain measures, whether that's a lockdown, whether that's a whether that's masking, whether it's something even as serious and violating as vaccine mandates, vaccine passports. The World Health Organization wants to take this next step. And it seems to me, it seems to me that they're going to need more fear in order to convince people to give away their liberty, in order to convince even government officials to try to give away sovereignty, our nation's sovereignty, to these 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 super governmental organizations. There's there's meaning they're not they're not part of our constitution. They're not part of our government. We have no we have no um, we don't have to. We have no obligation to obey. The World Health Organization. We don't have any kind of social contract with the World Health Organization the way that we do with our own United States government because our United States government was set forth in our constitution. The World Health Organization is just part of the United Nations. We can be a part of that organization, but they never have a right to usurp our sovereignty. Never. In fact, the, the George Bush administration at one point tried to give away U.S. sovereignty. They tried to allow the U.N. to boss us around when it came to international law. And this is uh, this was relating to our criminal justice system um, and, and our death penalty, to be specific. And the, world, and the U.N. tried to tell Bush, hey, listen, don't handle these cases of, of foreign nationals who committed murder in your country. Don't handle these cases according to your law. Handle them according to what we think you should do what what our rules and regulations say. And Bush actually tried to defer to the United Nations. He tried to say, oh, okay, we'll, we'll go ahead and follow UN rules. And he was sued. The Bush administration was sued um, actually by Senator Ted Cruz, interestingly enough. And Senator Ted Cruz won, won that case. He won that case at the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court ruled that the Bush administration, even though he's the president, even though he's the chief executive, he doesn't have the authority to give away U.S. sovereignty to the United Nations. He doesn't have the authority to give to give that power to something that's not not 
part of our government, not part of our social contract that citizens have with our government because our government was laid out in the Constitution. And so the World Health Organization wants this this pandemic pact, they're calling it. They want this power grab. They want these, these, these authorities, if you will, given to them by people who would take part in this pandemic pact. Leftist politicians in our country, of course, want this to happen. They're completely on board with this, but they do need more fear. They need people to be blinded by paranoia or else people are going to say, no, I don't want the World Health Organization to be able to mandate that I have some vaccine or tell my kid that they have to wear a mask when they go to kindergarten or lock down my business or prevent me from going to church. That should be something that that's that's part of our self-governance. That's that's what our communities are for. It's not even our federal government's role. It should be states and localities that decide how to handle public health crises. Certainly not the UN and the World Health Organization. So all of that being said, look, it, the monkeypox that was found here in the United States, there's three cases that have been found so far. Um, but what's sort of fascinating, sort of just mind-blowing, is that there was a case found in Massachusetts first, and then there was another case found in New York of monkeypox. And less than 48 hours after those first two cases of monkeypox were found in the United States, less than 48 hours, less than two days later, the U.S. government under Biden, the Biden administration, had spent $119 million to purchase 13 million doses of a monkeypox vaccine. Two cases one in Massachusetts and one in New York, within 48 hours, the Biden administration had spent 119 million bucks on 13 million doses of a monkeypox vaccine. It gets worse than that. The company from which the Biden administration purchased these vaccines is called Bavarian Nordic. Now, Bavarian Nordic has a longstanding relationship with the U.S. government. Um, not just the U.S. government, but the National Institute of Health and Dr. Fauci. And in fact, Bavarian Nordic um, has been under contract with the U.S. government for 20 years, since 2003, to develop and supply, manufacture the whole, the whole production, shebang, uh, smallpox vaccines. That's, that's been their gig with the U.S. government. And they've sold 30 million doses of smallpox vaccines to... Um, to the U.S. government, to the Department of Health and Human Services. Now, this is under biodefense because if a smallpox, if the smallpox virus were ever released around the world, it is very contagious. It is very deadly, and the vaccine people are, don't have immunity because we 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 it's it's not spreading anymore. It's, it doesn't exist, right? It's not endemic or anything. Um, but if it were, people aren't immune and would potentially need a vaccine. And so the U.S. government stockpiles smallpox vaccines. In 2006. Dr. Fauci gave $100 million to Bavarian Nordic for smallpox vaccines, again, in the name of biodefense. But now the argument is being made, we are being told that monkeypox can be prevented with the smallpox vaccine. That in fact, the existing smallpox vaccines from Bavarian Nordic are 80 to 85% effective against monkeypox. So look at this tangled web right now. Look at this tangle web. Two cases pop up, one in New York and one in Massachusetts. Within 48 hours, the U.S. government has bought 13 million doses of the of vaccines for this for $119 million from, from an organization that uh, has a long history with the U.S. government. I mean, Bavarian Nordic is... Is one, of, is one of Fauci's pet projects, right? I mean, we, we talked during COVID about how Fauci not only controls the purse strings of who gets government money by controlling those purse strings of who in, in the medical and scientific field, the, the R&D field in the, far, in the pharmacology field, uh, who gets that money, he determines what gets developed. He determines what scientists are developing, what he's chosen to be developed, because when you're doing research, you have to have a lab, you have to have money, you have to have a grant. Who gives that grant? Well, Fauci gives those grants to scientists. So any anybody who gets this much money from Dr. Fauci is a pet project of Dr. Fauci. And it, it, when I read all this, I thought, wow, this is just what, oh, what a tangled web we weave. The difference, the huge difference between COVID-19 and the monkeypox 
virus is that the monkeypox virus isn't new. The monkeypox virus has been around for decades. In fact, we had a previous outbreak of the monkeypox virus right here in the United States back in 2003. There were actually 72 cases of of monkeypox. Um, It says 37 of them were laboratory confirmed. And most cases just led to a mild rash. Nobody died from this in 2003, none of the 72 cases. Um, This is when they realized that the vaccines for smallpox were 85% effective against the monkeypox virus. Um, So fear of monkeypox. Should everybody be concerned? As Joe Biden says, no, everybody shouldn't be concerned. In fact, it's very much related to behavior. Not because it's a gay virus, as these leftists are telling us, but because it's spread through close contact, like sexual activity, and there's been an outbreak of it based on the super spreader event, the gay, the gay pride and fetish festival that happened in Belgium. And so now it is somewhat contained to gay communities around the world. We should acknowledge this. We absolutely should acknowledge this. this is not bigoted. This is not homophobic. This is certainly not racist. I don't know where they got that. They just pulled that one out of the hat of their false insults. Um, we should recognize this. It, it, it's, it's evil to create fear and paranoia in everyone when it's simply not warranted. It's simply not warranted. From what we know about this virus, it is transmitted through very close contact and sexual activity. So unless you are at a gay pride and fetish festival, unless you are taking part in bathhouse activities, unless you are at a gay orgy, then maybe you aren't at risk. Maybe, maybe you aren't at risk at all because of your behavioral choices. What the government is doing is the government is using this outbreak again to fearmonger, to scare you. They're using it to try to consolidate power. They're using it to enrich their friends, enrich the elites in our country, whether that's Fauci or the pharmaceutical companies. They're, it's corrupt. It's, it's absolutely corrupt. And it's worse than corrupt because they've been open about how they plan this. They, they've been open about the fact that they know exactly how government would react if something like this happened because they do simulations of this, these pandemic war games. They plan this down to the date. And so when it happens, they know exactly how the government's going to react. But not in, not in the preparedness way in the way the government takes away our rights and manipulates us with fear. Don't fall for this. Ask yourself the questions. What is it? Who's at risk? How is this transmitted? Do we have any kind of cure for this? What is government, how is government reacting to this? What can government actually do to help? Should they be involved here? And obviously we should always ask, what is the government's ulterior motive and who exactly stands to profit in money or in power from stoking the fear of a monkeypox pandemic the way that you can do, or the way that they are right now. And by the way, we should all be saying this exactly like this while we can. And I don't know how long we'll be able to talk about monkeypox, talk about the reality of monkeypox from every aspect, because Twitter has a new disinformation policy that might actually prohibit us from talking about public health emergencies as they are unfolding, unless the information that we are saying has been endorsed by the very same people who are fear-mongering. We're going to talk about Twitter's new disinformation policy and the person behind Twitter's new disinformation policy. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. You can head on over to the Liz Wheeler Show community on Locals. We are going to talk about the U.S. Army because the U.S. Army has a new policy related to soldiers who are offended by biological gender and state laws related to gender. Join us. That's all I'm going to say right here, right now. Join us on the Liz Wheeler Show community. We're going to break all that down. Go to lizwheelershow.com slash locals. You can use my promo code ACCESS to get your first month free on your annual subscription. That is lizwheelershow.com slash locals promo code ACCESS. Thank you for watching today. Thank you for listening. I'm Liz Wheeler. This is the Liz Wheeler Show. The Liz Wheeler Show is produced by Jonathan Hay. Executive producer, Chad Abbott. Director of Photography, Kevin McRoberts. Editor, Alejandro Figueroa. Sound mixer, Robin Fenderson. Director of Marketing, Emily Washler. Production and Talent Coordinator, Matt Toffler. And Senior Publicist, Patricia Jackson. This has been a Soundfront production.
If you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button below, and ring the bell to make sure you never miss a video.